On today's episode of Locked on Angels, we're recapping opening day because we have a contract and it says that we're obligated to do so. So what went wrong? Did anything go right? And what will the Halos do next? It's time to get locked on with Mike and John, and this is Locked on Angels. You are Locked on Angels, your daily Los Angeles Angels podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. You can find us anywhere you get your podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and SiriusXM by searching Locked On Angels. And if you'd like to get back to the Super Halo Bros for all the Super Halo content, here's some things that you can do. Leave us a rate and a review on Apple Podcasts. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not subscribed already, please subscribe and become a Locked On Everydayer. And whether you're watching or listening, come over to YouTube, leave a comment. It's one of the best ways to get in touch with us and be a part of the conversation. Happy Friday to you, and thanks for being here for this episode of Locked On Angels, where it's your team. Team every single day. You've got the Frisch Brothers here with you, aka the Super Halo Bros. My name is John, and that's my brother Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother John. Mike, it's our third season here at Locked On Angels. We just had opening day to officially kick off 2024. We're here five days a week talking Angels baseball with you, and so we're happy that you're here with us today. On today's show, we're going to break this opening day game down bit by bit, piece by piece, and then talk about where do we go from there? Uh, because I think that's an important question to ask. Uh, we're recapping that game. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm a little choked up from the, the loss. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, we're recapping that game against the Orioles. Mike, we're going to get into talking about the game. But first, why don't you hit me with like your initial thoughts on yeah. this one? Are we gonna are we gonna break it down or burn it down? That would burn be my first down. thought, right? Breaking down like my voice right now, John. Honestly, I am a Ron Washington fan, and I've appreciated the decisions that he has made and the culture that he has created. But when he announced that Patrick Sandoval was going to be the opening day starter, mm. I was not comfortable with that as a fan. And mm. you made a really good point on that episode. You said as a teacher, there was a kid who was kind of being. Uh, knucklehead. And so you invited him in to help you with some things so that you could help maybe him to be better and maybe control him a bit more. Yeah, right? that was a, so- that was a stupid analogy. I don't know what I was talking about. because <laughs> it, 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 Yeah, that didn't happen. Well, and, and, and I, I liked the, I liked the analogy, but what I, I dislike about what Wash did with Sandoval is this is what happens when you have somebody who is not ready and is not good and you try to like make a decision to invite them to come close thinking that it's going to help them to be good and this is the sand of all we've seen all spring training outside of that first start like what mm-hmm. he did yesterday is who he is and who he was last year and so i didn't see any reason why he should be opening up the season as the opening day starter i just thought it was a a dumb decision. It's the first dumb decision that Ron Washington has made since he's got here. So that's my initial thought. What about you? Yeah, you, they punt this game against Cy Young winner, Corbin Burns, so that they can take the next two. How about that, Mike? Yes. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> and maybe that's why you run Sandoval out there. Cause you know, it's not going to be an easy game anyway. No, that's obviously not why they did that. I was thinking they probably wanted to see if they could unlock something in him like WBC Sandy, when there's a lot of stuff on the line, but He is who he is, and he's got options. So have him go down and work on that fastball location, in my opinion. But anyway, let's get into this game. We had a modicum of hope in this one because Mike (laughs) Trout, in his first at-bat of the season, hits a home run. It was a slider over the plate, and it went to that deep part of left field. Not, Not quite that new cutout they have over there, but it was right next to it, so he's able to hit that home run. And you think, yes, get one run against Burns to make this competitive. Yeah. They give it right back in the next couple of innings, Mike, in the bottom of the first, a lot of people were asking, why didn't Anthony Rendon throw home when he had the chance to, and at the moment it was a one to nothing lead with no outs bases loaded. He tried for the double play. The turn was not fast enough. So he did get the out at second, but not at first in that situation. You take the tie game and you get the two outs before the wheels come off. The wheels came off anyway, because in the next inning, it's the bottom of the second. Rendon Rendon boots a little slow roller. That air kind of sets the tone because then Patrick Sandoval gives up these hits that are like a 63 or 66 mile per hour air, uh, an 83.6 double, a 99.7 mile per hour single. That one, yeah, should be a single. Yeah. 66.8 mile per hour single. So he's getting these weird dinky do hits off of him. Neto can't nab a single off of his glove. 
Then one inning and two thirds into the game, he's replaced by Jose Suarez. His final line, Mike. Patrick Sandoval, one and two thirds innings pitch, six hits, five runs, three earned, 60 pitches, exits with a 5 1 deficit. Didn't we say seven to three, 100 pitches, <laughs> yes. four, four unearned? That's basically, yeah. if you extrapolate it, yeah, that's basically what happened here. Right. Right. Uh, right. Rendon did make a nice diving stop and bounce the throw to save a run from scoring to end that inning. Uh, moving on, Mike, a couple of uh, other notes. Top of the third, Ohapi popped out, net okayed. Rendon had a fly out on a Cutter away that he pulled, which yep. we said, you got to go with that cutter. And yeah, don't pull it. Don't pull it. Top of the fourth, Hicks grounded out on full count. Burns can just move that cutter inside and out. Doesn't matter if you're a lefty or a righty. That guy is just a stud. Trout had a strikeout. Ward had a K on a full count. Santander got a two-run home run in the top of the fourth. Uh, top of the sixth, at this point, Mike, Burns had not given up a hit to anyone else. But Trout's home run, he didn't yeah. give up a walk. Nope. He had 11 Ks through six innings, 82 pitches. 82 pitches, John. That's how he finished his line, even with all the full counts that the Angels were working. Right. 82 pitches, 11 Ks, six innings pitched. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's all I have to say, right? That's all, yeah. That's all <laughs> there is. John, the bottom of the six, and Snero comes in, and, and he comes in after uh, uh, Suarez leaves with one on, one out. There was a stolen base, a pass ball. It puts... Uh, runners on on the corners and then there's a sacrifice fly it scores the runner from third then top of the seventh burns is out hicks gets a walk the first one for the day yeah for the angels right and then a pop-up from trout and then taylor ward hits into a double play bottom of the seventh there's a leadoff home run or i'm sorry leadoff walk from cincinero and then o'hearn doubles second and third nobody out and then the home run comes Cedric, Cedric Mullins hits what's, the, hits the what, bomb, right? What's that meme? It's Cedric Mullins again. I yes. can't get away from him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Zuniga comes in. He walks the first batter, strikes out the next guy. There's a wild pitch. Runner moves up to second base, and then there's a ground out and a fly out to end the inning. And then we get to the top of the eighth, Johnny, and there's a pinch hit double from Rain Hifo. So he comes in and doesn't help the narrative that he only does good when the Angels are doing bad. <laughs> right. Yeah, <laughs> right? no kidding. <laughs> But Sean Awell does extend his consecutive game streak of getting on base to 30 games. He is now third. It's the third longest in MLB history, which I love. And then Adele comes in as the DH with two on base for the first time all day, and he strikes out. So that wasn't good. Ohapi had a walk, with, and then the bases were loaded with one out. And then Neto hits into a fielder's choice. The ball gets passed first, and two runners come in to score, which Neto makes it... Uh, a bit respectable, right? Yeah, 11-3 at this point. Neto yeah. hustled down the line, and I think he forced that air over at first base. Mike, my, my fave, Adam Simber came in. One, two, three inning, baby. You Thank gotta you. love that. Yeah. Top of the ninth, Hicks K, broken back ground out from Moniac, and a K from Ward to end the game. So, yeah, just, they didn't, <laughs> they didn't do what they were supposed to do against no. Burns. They had every opportunity to maybe take some walks, every opportunity to look away at that cutter, but there were just some things that Corbin Burns does like that cutter right in the zone just induces swings and misses Mike. Yeah. It's just, it's he's good and yeah. he's really good. And this is why, and I'll talk about this later. This is why you have an ACE. Mm -hmm. This is why you have a guy you can go to every five days to start the season for you on opening day and pitch every five days that you can go out there and know that you're going to get this kind of start from Corbin Burns and the angels don't have that. And they certainly didn't put out, their best option in Patrick Sandoval. I would have taken Chase Silseth for crying right. out loud. The guy right. dominated the Dodgers lineup the other day. And I'll, I'll speak on that as well a little bit later, but man, it just goes to show that the Orioles mean business and they went out and got the ACE that they needed to help this rotation. Granted, we have the next two uh, days on Saturday and Sunday to maybe not have an embarrassing game like this, but at the end of the day, that's why you have somebody like Corbin Burns out there, right? Right, absolutely. And this isn't this isn't because the Orioles are really good. They're really good, but this was because Patrick Sandoval is just terrible. Yeah, and and he couldn't locate. He couldn't throw pitches where he needed to throw them. He was opening up way too early on his on his mechanics, like from and, the get go. From yeah, from and, pitch and, one, Mark Cuba's pointed it out. Yeah, and the Angels didn't do anything that they had been practicing no, during not spring at training. All. Like not they, it, at it, all. It, it was literally like, I'm going to give you a Sean Hunter from Boy Meets World. Woohoo! It <laughs> fell out of their brain as soon as they started regular season play. And, and that was probably the most 
disappointing, right? And I shouldn't be this irritated after one game, but I'm irritated yeah. because it was just really frustrating. And I guess I should have expected it. And I, again, like I pointed out at the top, I, I knew that Patrick Sandoval would not be the guy to make this happen. It would yeah. not be the guy to help this team and be the ace of this team. And so it, it was all in all just a disappointing, disappointing day. And I hate that now there's not a game today and we have to wait until Saturday because the beauty of baseball is if you have a disappointing game, you have a chance to erase it quickly and move forward. But now we have to wait and sit in it and let it marinate. And by the way, watching Shohei Otani go up five, nothing with, with the Dodgers immediately. <laughs> right. Like it, good for him. You know, that he's like, oh, th this is what it feels like. Right. And Absolutely. So that, that was, that was, uh, just an all in all frustrating, frustrating opening day for the angels. Right. Right. Hey, thanks for making lockdown angels. Your first listed every single day coming up. We're going to talk about what worked, what didn't work. And then where do the angels go from here? We're going to get into all of that coming right up. Today's episode of Locked On Angels is brought to you by FanDuel. Say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tournament, and it's happening right now, and it's a whole lot of fun to watch, more fun than the Angels. Whether you're betting on the big upset or the one seed, it's time to go dancing with America's number one sports book. And right now, new customers like you can get $200 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 wins. That's 200 bucks to use on the point spreads, the money lines, you can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, that's FanDuel.com slash locked on. When you go to that website, they'll know that you came from us at Locked On Angels. FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. This is the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every single day. If you're watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day, and you have to turn down the volume because of all the screaming and the shouting, well, make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. So Locked On Sports today brings you all the can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news that you're looking for. It's streaming 24-7 on YouTube or on the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Johnny, let's talk about what worked and what didn't work. Let's start with what didn't work. By the way, what didn't work is having this game start way too early while I was at work because as soon as the game started and Sandoval threw a four-pitch walk, <laughs> everybody I worked with asked if I was okay because I must have said out loud and didn't know, oh, here we go, right? It was just, it was terrible. And that's what Sandy did. He started the game with a four-pitch walk. He couldn't locate. He couldn't get any swings and misses. 10 called strikes, six whiffs. Sandy previously said about being the opening day starter that it comes with a lot of responsibility. He said he's ready for it. He's ready to lead these young guys to where they need to be. He's said that they have a, a young staff and a lot of young guys that are up and coming. And so it will be fun. Sandy, you did none of that yesterday. Hey, great job. Yeah. Well, here, big thumbs up to you for you did. None of that yesterday. That's what I'm talking about, Mike. Like they, they talk about like, oh, we're going to be about it. We're going to be not just talking, but winning. And and this is like, <laughs> it's just the complete opposite yeah. of how it could possibly go. Right. We're going to be about it. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And the minute opening day starts, you throw a four pitch walk. Right. And it's just like, well, yep, there it is. There, set the tone. Here we go. Yeah. And then that's exactly what happened is just you, you watch that go down. You watch that four pitch walk to start the game. And you're like, okay. It, we're right. doing this again. Here we uh, go. And, and, and to your point that you made earlier, this is why you do get an ace. This is yeah. why you have somebody that you can count on. And and I know that Blake Snell was not our favorite for a lot of reasons. And a lot of locked on everydayers would say he's not the favorite, but Blake Snell has a better start than Patrick Sandoval. I right. guarantee you Jordan Montgomery has a better start than yeah. Patrick Sandoval. I guarantee you. Right. And, and so this is what's really, really, Marcus Stroman has a better start. No kidding. No <laughs> you know, kidding. like it, it, this is why you have an ace that, that can set the pace for you. And the angels always typically, I mean, I've been an angel fan a long time. So have you, they always typically lose opening day. They did last year against the A's. I know that, that, that is kind of their trajectory. It's kind of their tradition. It's frustrating. However, to get it, to get a win against a good team, like, like Baltimore and to score first, I mean, all of the, indicators were there for this team to do well. And they gave Sandoval everything that he needed. And it still wasn't enough to have him go out there and be calm 
cool and collected to mm-hmm. get over his emotions, to get out of his head. He just couldn't do that. And again, I'm not surprised because this is who he's right. been, right? Right. Exactly. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about Sandy starting a game and what happens with the uh the uh defenders behind yeah. him later on. But Mike, yeah. like you said, this is why you get an ace. Anybody could have been the ace of this staff. You could get Michael Waka and he would have been better yeah. than uh, than Patrick Sandoval on opening day. But to say all that, we have to go to Jose Suarez in game one. So that's good, great, wonderful. Like, here we are playing the same game that we've done the last couple of years. And I understand it was simply to eat up innings and save the uh, the arms in the bullpen. And he did a decent job. I know he yeah. gave up that two-run home run to Santander. But other than that, he did the job that he was supposed to. And that was take a, a bunch of innings so that you don't burn through all your best arms in the bullpen. And the reason they go to Suarez is because it's five one at this point. And so that's an impossible mountain to climb, especially against Corbin Burns. There was a minute there where I thought, why didn't they go to Jose Soriano? Because they're kind of stretching him out. They want him to be long relief because he's a good arm. And I think they saw the writing on the wall with, Oh, five, one deficit to Corbin Burns. Yeah. We're we're cooked here. And so I think that's what happened here. And then the Anthony Rendon air, Mm-hmm. He goes all spring. We we nail our spring training hot take. Yeah, and two innings into the real the real thing, he boots that ball. Yeah. Now he, I think he recovered from that by making some good plays over there at third. But just how, how does this stuff happen? I just don't yeah. understand it. Especially when the ball's like rolling out there as slow as it did, and it just felt like we're we're doing this again. Is this is this where we're going already on day one and? I have to reel myself in a little bit because sure. I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but it's just like, how does, how does, how do all these things rear their ugly head two innings right into the real thing? It just drives me crazy. Yeah. Everything that went wrong last year was kind of encapsulated in this game. Right. And, and the, there were and the, and the answers that we yeah. had, like, Oh, we got to turn it over to Suarez again. And oh, yeah. we got to do this because it's just like, the same patterns as the last right. couple of years it just drove me nuts watching this game. Artie, are you watching what's happening? Hey, let's talk about what uh, went right, which was very small. It was a bite size. It was Mike Trout hitting a home run saying, hey, guys, remember me? Yeah. Remember uh, how good I am? Fourth opening day home run. It was a new Angels record. And I loved it, John. I texted you, all caps, Trout, right? right? And, and it was exciting because we got a run in the first inning off of Burns, and that was great. But that's really all that the Angels were able to do because they immediately went down in the next inning, right? Yeah, that, I, we said it like one to two runs against Corbin Burns is a good thing. Yeah, because as long as the starting pitching, even if Sandoval had given up three runs, Mike, three, yeah, like, and and gone five innings, that would have been a lot better than what we got. And it just came down to the fact that he's given up the free passes. They're having these errors that happen out there. And those guys, we talked about it. The Orioles are going to extend first to third. They're going to yeah. take the extra base. And that's exactly what they did. They ran yeah. all over the Angels, not just stolen bases, but taking advantage of, of the hits that they were getting, the, the the dinks and the dunks and all that stuff, and taking the extra base when they had the opportunity to do so. And so, again, it comes back to the fact that even if we had a decent start, like yeah. not a great start, a competent start yeah. against Corbin Burns and got that one run. At least it would have been competitive later on in the game, right? Well, and and I think what happens in like the first inning, the bottom of the first, Sandy doesn't get out of the inning. He has two outs. He's only given up one run, but then he gives up that second run. And that's yeah. what he did last year. He had an opportunity to shut it down, but he's not able to shut it down. Yeah. And the reason why Burns looks so good is because he's good, but also you spot him a lead. Now he gets to throw whatever he wants to throw. Right. There's no pressure, no. right? And if the Angels are putting any pressure on him, perhaps they can get to him because that's part of what went right in this game. Even though they only scored three runs and only got one hit against Burns, a lot of what they were doing was right, right? Yeah, and and the at-bats against Burns, to their credit, there were a lot of full counts. There were a lot of guys watching the pitches drop out of the zone, watching the pitches they should be watching, drop out of the zone. So it wasn't as if they were swinging at a lot of junk. The stuff they did swing at was the stuff that induces ground balls and strikeouts. And that's his cutter. That's his sinker. That's the change up when he wants to throw it. The, the, the big looping uh, curve ball just drops straight in there. And, and so again, it's, they had competitive at bats, 
but Burns is just really good. And that was a frustrating thing to see, but you, you can't give Corbin Burns an inch and they gave him a four run cushion by the time Sandoval left that game. And like you said, he can throw whatever the heck he wants at that point. He's throwing Mm -hmm. the cutter. He's throwing the cutter in on the hands of the lefties. He's throwing it away from the righties or even in on their hands and jamming them up. It's that's a Cy Young. And that's an ace at the end of the day. Uh, They got the most out of Jose Suarez. Like I mentioned the two run Homer. um, And, and, but what are you going to do? Sandoval went an inning and two thirds. So Suarez comes in, mops it up. That's all that you can ask for out of Jose Suarez. But like I said, in a five to one deficit against Corbin Burns, you might as well go to the guy who's going to get you through this game. And other than that home run, he kept it. He kept the score where it was. It was just the angels couldn't do anything after that. Mike, I really liked Neto's hustle down the first baseline, because even though that could have been a double play, it yeah. probably should have been, he hustled down. And I think he forced the th- the throw at first to be an error because of how fast he was coming down the line. Um, it could have been a double play to the end of the inning, but the two runs came around to score on the air. And that's what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Nickel and dime. That's right. a perfect example of nickel and dime because had this been a closer game, there's two runs right there. And that's against the bullpen. And we all kind of thought like going in, the angels have a chance against the bullpen. It really just depends on how long Corbin Burns goes, but with such a large cushion, they didn't have to extend Burns past the sixth inning. And so they were able to just put in those relievers to get the job done. But again, it would have been nice in a closer game to see that kind of nickel and dime happening. But unfortunately it just got way out of hand for the angels on opening day. Mike, now that we've got opening day out of the way. So now what, (laughs) what, what now, where do we go from here? I have some questions. I want to shoot them at you. Okay. First of all, what what was this? Was it nerves? <laughs> was it young players talking in their first day jitters? Because there's a lot of guys on their first opening day in this one. Zach Neto, it was his first opening day. It was Nolan Shawnowell's first opening day. Mickey Moniak and his first opening day with the Angels. Um, I know Rendon had an air, but to me, the vets were the ones who actually looked comfortable. It, obviously, Trout with his home run and even though Drury and Rendon and Hicks didn't get the hits that they needed, they at least still had somewhat competitive at bats. But what was that yesterday? What do you think? The answer will come on Saturday and Sunday. Mm. We'll, We'll find out if it was opening day jitters and young player nerves or not. And what we see happen on Saturday and what we see happen on Sunday will give us a good indication. Even if they don't win, what we see will give us a good indication as to if it was them just being really like palms are sweaty, right? Like they're really uncomfortable or they're really nervous. <laughs> Knees you know? weak, arms spaghetti. <laughs> and so I, I think that that's how we're going to get, how we're going to get our answer. And, and, and John, when it comes to Patrick Sandoval, it's interesting to me that when he's on the mound, the players behind him really fall apart. Always. Right. Like it's, it's like, this is not a coincidence anymore where no. we used to be like, ah, shucks. It's just another, no, another game where these guys, you know, can't get Sandy the lead or can't get yeah. Sandy. The unearned runs 23 unearned runs last year, Mike. Yeah. And eight the year before that. And, and now here we are again with, uh, I think two in this one, I think three runs were earned. Two were unearned Yeah, in this one. For yeah. Patrick Sandoval off to a great start. So it's already started. Yep. Is, this isn't a coincidence anymore, is it? No, and I think there's a couple of reasons. One, this really all boils down to Sandoval. First, if you're going to throw a four-pitch walk to the very first guy, you already have your defense on their heels. Mm-hmm. You already have them sitting out there going, come on, right? Mm-hmm. And and that first is an indication that this is on Sandoval because you don't have the defense ready. Second, he is just a nervous Nelly on the mound, right? Mm-hmm. And and I know that he was a bit better yesterday, wasn't so exuberant in his motions and things like that. However, I think the guys behind him, including Anthony Rendon, move maybe a bit quicker than their eyes and their hands hmm. are, are able to move, right? And I think that that's why Rendon 
made that error because well, I think he's trying too hard to get that out. He's moving too fast because he doesn't want to let this guy down. And again, the answer to the reason why they fall apart behind Sandy will be answered on Saturday and Sunday because let's watch the defense behind mm -hmm. a Griffin Canning and behind a Reed Detmers. And let's watch and see what happens because I think what we'll find is that they're constantly ready to go versus not sure what Sandoval's going to do. Is somebody going to make contact or is he going to walk this guy? Is it going to come at me? And we got to make sure we help him out. I think they have more going on in their, in their hearts and in their minds than a baseball player needs when Sandoval's on the mound. Well, and the, the perfect example of that is, you know, I saw Zach Neto have that ball bounce off of his glove when he was going for it. Tough play, but it's yeah. a play that he makes 90% of the time. Yep. And then the minute Jose Suarez comes in, oh, easy grounder to short, easy <laughs> right. grounder to second, yeah. Yeah. easy fly out. You know what I'm saying? It's right. just like, where, where does that go? And why does it only happen to Patrick Sandoval? Why does he get dinky, dude? Yeah. And, and you're right. I think he puts these guys on edge. And I think he, as the starter, sets the tone for the game. And I brought this up earlier. Look at Silseth with the Dodgers. Yes. First pitch to Mookie Betts, gets right in there for a strike. Next pitch is a fly out. Then he strikes out Otani. And then he's able to get Freeman out. And then he's going through this Dodgers order, mind you, in a spring training game. But yeah. at this point of the of spring training, these guys are trying to be competitive. And then look how the team played behind him mm -hmm. in that one. And then you look mm -hmm. at what happened when Sandy takes the mound. The complete opposite. Because on, was that Tuesday that we talked about Silseth's start against the Dodgers? Yeah. The rest of the infield and the outfield and the way the guys hit in this one all looked really good. So you can't tell me in two and a half days later in a, in a flight across the country, maybe that has something to do with it, <laughs> but you can't tell me that everything they did right on Tuesday just falls out of the back of their head. Yeah. It's because Chase still set, set the tone the other night by getting the big three out the MV three at the top of the Dodgers order. Still Seth took care of business and then the angels were just ready to roll. And I think that's the complete opposite of what happened yesterday. Mike, how do they move on from this stinker of an opening day? They they need to. And when I say they, I'm going to talk to Ron Washington specifically. Stop giving any tips of the cap or nods to players that have been there the longest or are veteran guys. Like yeah. Chase Silseth should have been the opening day starter. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're going with that now? I mean, honestly, like, and yeah. I said that, I said that uh, uh, like, like earlier in the off season, but as kind of like a, maybe a bold prediction, but the reality is, is like, listen, you got to stop. You got to stop giving credit to guys that haven't earned it. Hmm. And, and, and so don't, don't go, well, we're going to go with this guy because he's our closer. We're going to go with this guy because he's our second. Stop doing all of that. This is the season that you have the opportunity to stop doing all of that and go with your gut and let these, if you're going to let the young guys, but let them play and let Chase Silseth go out and do his thing. And I like the Griffin Canning starting Saturday and it's not Detmers or somebody else. Like let the guys that most people are like, are they, are they really this? Are they really, that? let's find out. Let's find out. Don't put Hicks out there. Put Adele out there. You know what yeah. I mean? Like th this is the type of stuff. These are the types of decisions that need to be made instead of going, well, you know, Sandy's been here the longest and he's earned the right. right. No, he hasn't, he hasn't earned the right at all. And so he didn't earn it this so, spring I, performance and, and this and, and wash. He said this performance is going to dictate opportunity. Yeah. So, so do that. He don't, said, don't go against that. Do that. He said, if you can't pull your weight, you're not going to be on this team. He said yeah. that very early on yeah. when he got here. And, and it has to be a short rope. Don't, no long rope. Like yeah. this start, I know it's opening day. It's one game. I get it. 161 games left. I don't want to keep saying it's still early. Like I, I, no. I want to go, no, 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 you're done. Move you on. You have to work on that. Yeah. You have to figure that out. Because if you don't figure that out, we're not going anywhere and you're not helping us. Sandy, you're going to San Bernardino and you're going to throw 100 fastballs in the strike zone in yeah. your outing against the high A team. And it That's doesn't matter how happen. many pitches you throw in an inning. I want you to throw all of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, Mike, for me, I say, good. Get embarrassed. Get mad. Yeah. Get something. Because that was atrocious yeah. yesterday. It was sloppy. It was sad. It was pathetic. I hope that you're embarrassed. Yeah. And I understand that there's nerves. And like I said, I love the guys on this team. I love Ohapi and Shanuel and Trout and, and Neto. I root for those guys. 
But if this doesn't piss you off, if this doesn't make you mad what happened yesterday, you better have that fire in your belly on Saturday when you come walking in to Camden Yards because after what happened yesterday, you really got to say something and you got to make mm-hmm. a statement. You've been mm-hmm. telling us all off season. We're, we're hungry. Gonna be, we're going to be about it. We're hungry. We're this, we're that, the other, nobody yeah. has to do too much. Yeah. Uh, everybody's going to pull their weight. Well, well, trout certainly did what he was supposed to do right in this one. And if, if, if nobody's going to have that much pressure on them, it's because everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. And this one that did not happen. So I hope that they get angry. I hope they get out there and that they have a chip on their shoulder when they go out and face the Orioles on Saturday. Thanks for making Locked On Angels your first listen of the day. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and it's now available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. And you can find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. Hey, give us a follow at Locked On Angels on Twitter and at Super Halo Bros on Twitter and Instagram. Whether you're watching or listening to today's show, come on over to YouTube and find today's episode. Get in the comments section. It's the best way to be part of the conversation. Mike, what do we have on deck for Monday's show? We've got two games that we're going to recap. Two! Okay? Two games. And I want to talk about two wins. All right? So, I'm going to okay. speak it into existence. There you I'm, go. I want to talk about two wins. Angels. Wash, I want to talk about two wins Monday on Locked On Angels. All right. We're, what hap- <laughs> I don't want to ask what happens if uh, if, if that doesn't happen. I'm not the- going there. <laughs> we're not going there. All right, friends. We hope you have a great weekend. We hope you have a great uh, Easter with whoever you call family or your family that you celebrate with. And we'd love to see you back here on Monday. Until then, my name is John, and that's my brother, Mike. And my name is Mike, and that's my brother, John. Thanks for being here with us, and we'll see you back here on Monday. Do you see me shift into dad voice at the very end there? I did. I was, I was I, dad voice. I got and, scared. And, and the dad finger. Waving I, was, it. I felt like I was in trouble. <laughs> <laughs>